now a mercenary and former soldier, Jonathan Shale, gone off the grid from a secret operation, takes on the identity of a substitute teacher in a troubled high school, where his girlfriend works. Back in Miami, he investigates the brutal beating of his girlfriend, Jane. He discovers that the school is dominated by a notorious gang, called the Kings of Destruction, the KOD. Will Shale be able to exert revenge? Will he be able to take down the KOD and save the school? The movie begins with Shale and his team, on their way out of an operation, that they later find out, was unauthorized, rendering them released from duty. After they part their different ways with Shale back home. It continues with an awesome view of the city of Miami, and slowly to Jane, who takes a class in the school. Soon after, a fight erupts on the school premises, making it necessary to strategically set up an ambush targeting a student engineered by the KOD. Jane and another teacher, Mr. Sherman, succeed in breaking up the ambush, saving the student in danger, even though he denied needing help. Jane tries to talk to the person, who instigated the fight, the ring leader, Juan. In a motherly voice, she tries to make him see, how much better he could become, she urges him to turn a new leaf and show his innate brilliance. This calm advice and plead is met with a stone-cold heart and stubbornness as Juan refuses her advice rudely, threatening to harm her if she didn't let him be, and walks out on her. The teachers report to the school principal, explaining why the KOD needs to be addressed and most likely expelled. The principal informs them, they do not have enough evidence of a threat to warrant expulsion. Even when she repeats his threat to make her regret confronting him, the principal's views didn't change. This made Jane angry and she walks out on the principal, assuring him that she'd get his proof. Heading to her car, she finds the entire gang, surrounding her vehicle, and on reaching the car door, finds the keyhole taped shut. They taunt and tease her, as she struggles to open the car door. Juan throws a sign, and she does the same thing, though inverted, to flip him out. Luckily, she gets into the car before the gang could get to her. It doesn't stop there, as these ill-natured students, do all sorts of sexual taunts, and insults at the car and at her while she drives away. On getting home, to her surprise, she finds her husband in the house, and runs into his arms excitedly. After catching up with the man she had missed so much, they talk about why he was back, instead of in service. Shale opens up, that he has been dismissed, and they proceed to joke about, what he'd do next. Shale gets a voicemail left by one of his subordinates, about a job offer, he managed to hook up for the team. They discuss the job at a strip club, and Joey convinces him to take the gig. Meeting the client, he gets to meet his competition John Janus, who would later play a part in an attempt to kill him. Shale hears the briefing of the job and deciphers that it was protecting drugs, being moved from the government and rival dealers. He regrets the job, as it went against his morals, even though John Janus took it. The next morning, Jane takes a jog around the beach, and as she went on, Shale happens to be looking for her as well. A member of the KOD is placed by her path and when she gets to him, he breaks her knee, and attempts to beat her up when Shale intervenes. He takes her to the hospital and they try to figure out who is behind the attack. Jane asks him to help her at the school. He decides to become a substitute teacher for his wife. This was after he promised Jane, that the KOD wouldn't get away with what they have done. Shale gathers information about the school and devises a plan with his team. He assumes a new identity to hide that he was related to Jane, the new name being Smith. Next, he submits his application and is soon interviewed by the principal, Claude Rawl. Shale introduces himself to the principal and Rawl informs him that he's welcomed and will be on probation for the time being. Shale, now Smith, affirms that he'll do his best in standing in for Jane. After this, Smith leaves with his true intentions hidden behind his calm appearance. With this, he has successfully infiltrated the school and has his stage to bring justice to those responsible for his lady's attack. Smith walks into his first classroom, and is faced with a group of disinterested and doubtful students. They show no sense of organization or decorum. Overlooking this, he walks to the front of the room and greets the class, while projecting an aura of confidence. He follows this up by taking attendance of these unruly students, brimming with disrespect, but as he continues, he notices the underlying negligence and unease among the students. All Smith can do is, during the class, gather information, by listening to their conversations and paying attention to their interactions and details. In the staff room, after some time, he meets Mr. Sherman and the librarian, Hannah, and a conversation ensues after introductions are made. He learns all they know about the KOD, and the history of their violence, and grip on the school. Hannah gives a hint, that the could might be responsible, for the attack on Jane. She also hints, that the principal might be involved with the KOD. Even though, Sherman defended the principal solely, because he was a cop, 
Smith decides to talk to Principal Rawl. In the discussion with Rawl, he gets to see signs that validate the librarian's thoughts like the watch the principal was wearing. They both play mind games, subtly passing messages to each other. The conversation ends with Rawl passively threatening Smith about power. Later on, Smith meets with his team and informs them of a plan to watch the school, specifically the activity of the KOD. Even though one of them did not agree, he manages to convince most of the team on this mission, and they get to work. The next day, he gets to class and begins his lesson on the history of Vietnam. As he turns to face the board, a student called Tay, throws a squeezed can at him. Thanks to Smith being observant, he catches the can, and throws it back at Tay's forehead, shocking everyone in the class. Tay gets aggressive and confronts him, the rest of the class pressures Tay to knock Smith out and he gives in to the pressure. In self-defense, Smith twists his arm, asking him to not litter the room. He also asks Rodriguez, another student who had an ice pick he had seen earlier, to hand over the ice pick. Rodriguez tries to put up a front, but Smith twists his finger, asking for the weapon. Since he is in a lot of pain, he hands the ice pick to Smith. Establishing authority through this violence and getting everybody's attention, Smith addresses the class sternly this time. Tay and Rodriguez later go to see the school nurse. There, they meet the principal and report Smith to him. The principal hurries to the class, calling a guard, Mavin, to head to the class too. On getting there, he meets a peaceful class with students, now paying attention and opening up to Smith. Principal Rawl decides to wait, till the class is over. During the lesson, Lakas, the head of the KOD tries to intimidate Smith, asking if he had been shot. Later on, watching the school areas with the cameras Smith's guys had installed, he sees Rawl heading for the classroom and puts everything in place. The principal talks to him about lawsuits the students want to file. Rawl asks him to apologize or he'll be fired. Smith knowing fully well, that can't be done without a two weeks notice, asks that due process be followed. Worried that Smith challenged him, he runs a background check on Smith's qualifications, but most of the information he got, was false and fed to him by Smith and the team. Smith gets Jane back to her house, and she sees a letter, she got from some of the students and starts crying. Smith tries to comfort her but they get into a mild argument. The next day, Smith gets to class and begins teaching, when Juan Lacos and his lackeys walk in late with him. Smith calls out Juan, for being late, and Juan retorts saying, would he like it, if he wrote sorry on the blackboard ten times, Smith decides he writes it a hundred times. Since Juan cannot disobey a teacher without facing consequences, he gets to writing after threatening Smith. Smith gets to use Jerome's name, to start an interesting and interactive class, which soon led to deep conversations about their future, getting them to face reality and be more sober. After the class had ended, Rawl meets Smith to commend him on handling Lacos without force. He also asks Smith, to meet him at a specific time. Right after this, Rawl meets up with Juan Lacos to set up a hit on Smith. Luckily, Smith could see them on the camera. When the time came, Juan and some others were ready to ambush Smith, who was already prepared for all this. With his bulletproof vest, he waits in the library for Juan and his boys, including some armed guards that Rawl ordered. He changes the tables gaining the advantage, and a confrontation begins and during this, Smith gets shot. At the end of this, while Rawl thought they had killed and thrown Smith's body from the library, but in reality, Smith throws each one of them out the window. On the way out, Rawl meets Smith, to his surprise and Smith acts like nothing happened, asking what he wanted to see him for. To avoid suspicion, Rawl says it's too late and Smith plays along. Meanwhile, Mr. Sherman visits Jane and keeps her company for a while. Sherman also gets to know about Shale as being Smith indirectly by connecting the dots. Joey tracks the movement of Juan Lacos and drops a message for Smith, about his whereabouts and continues tailing Juan. Meanwhile, Smith gets home, and after some pretense, Jane confronts him about his fake name and intentions about the school, from what she had learned from Sherman. Smith explains that Rawl might be part of the KOD, and more importantly, his commitment to giving the kids back their school. The team keeps on tracking the movements of the KOD, and soon Joey places a call to Smith, telling him to get there. He leaves the house to somewhere near a port, which seems to be a spot for a major drug deal. Smith and Joey watch the KOD duo confirm the drug deal. At the right time, they attack both parties of the drug deal, Smith taking the KOD and Joey taking the buyers on the boat. Out of the blue, the one teammate that disagreed with the plan earlier asks Bull to beat the hell out of Smith. They fight for a while till Smith knocks him out. The teammate then helps to finish Bull off, they get the money and throw the drugs into the sea. In the morning, Rawl gets the news of this drug bust on the television, and soon gets a call from the drug lord, threatening to hurt him, 
if the money lost wasn't provided. Rawl hurries to school to confront Juan, but soon gets to know who's responsible, when Smith announces that facilities and free pizza have been provided for the students with that money. The students get chummy with Smith and Sherman as well. Sherman asks to help, and Smith explains that Rawl might be involved, but Sherman's judgment is clouded. Rawl informs the drug lord, that he knows where the money went. Later that night, an attempt is made on Smith's life and Sherman gets robed into Tala's business and ends up dead, but a student was present to witness. To Rawl's surprise, Smith comes to school the next morning alive, contrary to the news, he had given the school of Smith's death. Both parties make confrontation with each other, with Smith confronting Mr. Wilson, and the KOD attacking Jane's house which Smith and the others managed to merely escape, till a final showdown at the school, between Smith's team and the KOD. Though a couple of lives were lost, and some classrooms destroyed, they managed to take out the KOD and return the school to the students with Smith and Joey left as survivors. Thanks so much for watching the video till the end. It means you really love the story, so don't forget to share your love with us.